strikes to set the base. Now for some back-breaking labor, but he's built for it. Look at that fighter, literally and figuratively skipping water on his tail. Welcome to Sportsman's Adventures, and I'm your host, Captain Rick Murphy. We're at the International Game Fish Association here in Dania, Florida, and I gotta say, every year, we do a special show dedicated to International Game Fish Association. This year, we wanna talk about the great library of books and vintage films that they have. We're gonna take a look this week at the founders, Mike and Helen Lerner, who in the 1930s traveled all over the world fishing for marlin, swordfish, and giant tunas. That's right, soft music while they struggle with that load. For a ponderous chapter in this story, how a big fish gets into a museum. And that's what they have in there. Not the fish themselves, but their plaster casts. Forms of giant marlin and shark caught here in New Zealand's Bay of Islands and destined for a 6,500 mile journey to a New York museum where the skins will be redraped over plaster molds and mounted to give the fish eye to all frustrated fishermen. There's a skin any marlin hunter would love to touch. Before the skins or forms could be taken, someone quite naturally has to catch the giants. And that's where the action in this story enters. Also, the angling experts, Michael Lerner on the steps, followed by his wife, Helen Lerner, in fishing the Martin Johnson team all over again. The waters of New Zealand abound in game fish below and in scenery above. And I do mean beautiful. There's Lady Helen, and she's got something beside porpoise on her mind. Yes, and it's a strike. And how? If it's a... She's taken more of them than any woman in the world. That looks like a shark. Helen holds the lady's record for a white shark of 483 pounds. So this battle is nothing new to her. It's all over but the gaffing after a grueling two and a half hour fight. The lifeless man-eater is ready now to be hauled aboard. What? Lifeless? <laughs> Anything else but. There's an end to everything, even to a shark's resistance. Lock full of teeth, a double row of them, sharp as knives, which certainly make those jaws an instrument of death. Nice work, Helen. Who said fishing was a man's game? One of the main objectives of this expedition is to bag a big black marlin. And Lerner's hook is out there and hoping. Hey, that looks like a Mike. He's charging your bait. The marlin struck the bait fish with his bill, and Lerner releases the line for a count of 10, so the marlin will think he has a crippled victim. He keeps his line slack to encourage the marlin to swallow the bait. There, he's got it. And Mike strikes to set the bait. Now for some back-breaking labor. But he's built for it. Look at that fighter, literally and figuratively skipping water on his tail. Pump him, Mike, and don't give him an inch. He's certainly laying back on that rod. Mike knows if the marlin ever turns and heads out to sea, it's goodbye, Mr. Fish. Look at him buck. A salt bronco. Man, oh man. Mike has his hands full with that finny powerhouse whose out of water jumps are best illustrated in stop motion. Tail walking, they call that. Looks more like a miracle of strength. Now in attempting to throw the hook, he'll use every trick in the bag. Once again, with stop motion, his headlong leap carries the marlin clear out of the water. Yes, and knives through for two more tremendous 20-foot lunges, held again to show the peak of the jump, which they call greyhounding. Far out of the reach of that animal. Don't forget, you're looking at a giant weighing around 700 fighting pounds. Look at him go. That great fish is heading for the rocks, and if he makes it, those sharp pinnacles will cut Mike's line like scissors. But no, no, he's tiring from such tremendous effort, and Mike has turned his head at the last moment. But Mike still knows there's only one fish in the sea right now for him. Yes, in the sea and out, as the marlin doubles back in his tracks, a maneuver which makes the angler's line and hard. His greyhound leaps still seem to have distance, but not quite the snap.
If only Mike's line will hold. Those slim threads of linen soon will reel out over bending pole as the marlin stalks to great depths. Have we lost him? The sharks might get him if he stays down too long. No, he's still there and pitching plenty. A fight which might go on for hours. But this expert angler knows the tricks of deep sea fishing, so it won't be long now. Yes, he's just about through. After a long but losing battle, the ocean's gamest warrior has literally died fighting. The prize is coming in now, and what a prize. With the additional thrill for any angling sportsman of not only one, but two marlin flags. A feat which Lerner has performed three times for world records with broad billed swordfish. But that is a magnificent specimen of the largest, roughest, and toughest of the marlin, the black, the black beauty. One of the largest ever taken with rod and reel. Arriving at the dock, the museum experts go to work on the all-important question of weight. And it's soon determined. 706 pounds of streamlined beauty. As for these, five of them, count them for yourself. Each one caught with slim rod and thinner line. Well, Mike Lerner, maybe you've got a right to smile. It's a strike. He's hooked. Just look at that line tear off the reel. Mr. Broadbill is going to realize his lunch has a string attached to it. I'd been hearing about this saltwater fishing up in Massachusetts, and when Larry asked I'd like to come north and fish a couple of days for striped bass, oh well, that's like throwing an old southern cottontail into a briar patch. I sure was looking forward to hauling out one of them big ones. This should put us down to where the big ones are. Just keep popping and be ready for action. But Larry kept looking for the fish, and I kept sitting in the boat freezing. The best way to get a fish to bite is to make him think you're not paying no attention. Sure enough, there he was. Now that's what I've been waiting for. One thing's for sure, he's no schoolie. He might be a Plymouth schoolie, but to me, he's a horse. If I wanted him, I had to whip him first. Now that's a fish. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Florida, the fishing capital of the world. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Rapala, Williamson Lures, Maverick Boats, Minn Kota, Humminbird, La Jolla Resort, Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Why is Yamaha your best investment? Just ask Captain Buddy LaPointe. In the charter business, I can't afford time. My Yamaha 150 four-stroke is the most dependable, trouble-free outboard I've ever run. This clean-burning, quiet, fuel-efficient Yamaha four-stroke is the most versatile outboard in the Yamaha lineup. So invest in the best, the clean, quiet, dependable Yamaha F-150. Yamaha, because your best investment starts right here. Happy birthday, Yoni. were this easy to find, you wouldn't need Humminbird side imaging. Amazing picture-like images and a 480-foot side-to-side beam eliminate unproductive water fast, so you'll be at their front door in no time. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. I've been fishing all my life and seen some pretty cool things on the water. I've seen 180-pound tarpon jump in my boat. I've seen giant snook slam live bait, and I've also seen super shallow redfish I can hold to. I've seen a lot, and a lot has changed except my boat builder, Maverick Boat Company. Make no mistake about it, Maverick makes the best technical pulling skiffs, high-speed backcountry skiffs, and bay boats in the world. Hughes, Maverick, or Pathfinder, number one for a reason. Has your Florida fishing or hunting license expired and you need it renewed now? No problem. The FWC has several services 
that will allow you to buy your license instantly. No matter where in the woods or on the water, all you need is a major credit card. For a small additional service fee, you can purchase these licenses directly online or simply by calling a toll-free number. To get your instant license online, log on to myfwc.com or call toll-free 1-888-FISH-FLORIDA or 1-888-HUNT-FLORIDA. Welcome back to our special show dedicated to the International Game Fish Association founders, Mike and Helen Lerner. Check out this film from the early 1940s, Fishing in Chile. This is the harbor at Tocopilla. In the nearby waters off the coast of Chile, angling for great game fish is a thrilling sport. Here, Mike and Helen Lerner, the world's foremost fishing couple, check over their charts of the big game area before starting on their historic fishing expedition. So Mike and Helen give the signal. Cast off. Seas like this, just riding a fishing cruiser is quite a thrill. Talk about shoot the shoot, practically on one. Up's a daisy, and down she goes. But it's all part of the day's business. And what's that? Something setting up an awful rumpus out there in the water. The lookout sees it too, and up comes the age-old cry, There she blows! That cry means a whale. Now, far up in the bow, he too is excited about the monsters in the distance. And that's a tidy little visitor to have hanging around. But Mike wants to get still better acquainted. He's waving his arms in excited anticipation. There's a whole pod of whales in the neighborhood. And if one of those flukes ever hits this packet, there'd be curtains all around. That fellow was right under the boat. Say, what a shot for an old-time harpooner. All the whales in the South Pacific must be in this spot. And talk about obliging, there's a monster who really put on a diving demonstration for our cameras. Guess he was saying so long. Well, Mike thinks it's time to get down to business. And this is what Mike Lerner traveled thousands of miles for. Thrills. Even the one an angler gets when the bait is being prepared. A whole bonito in this case. And great care is taken to fix it just right. A chicken for lunch. Anyway, Mike, like a lot of us, is a superstitious angler. The wishbone stuffed inside for luck. Well, some people put their faith in four-leaf clovers and others in a horseshoe. But in this case, it's a wishbone. And now they seem to be putting a fisherman's blessing of hope on the bait. Do your stuff, Mr. Benito, and Mike will do the rest. As the boat reaches the fishing grounds, the bait is thrown over. Then a little checking up to see if it moves naturally in other. It looks all right to us. So the cruiser is slowed down to the most practical trolling speed. And from now on, there's nothing for us to do but wait until Hernando, the ever watchful lookout, sights the prey. And here's our chance. You see those fins cutting the water? It's a broadbill swordfish. A whopper. Let's get him. Atta boy, Mike. You won't need a sweater if that baby gobbles your bait. And if he's interested, he's turned. Maybe the wishbone did the trick. These are the few breathless moments every fisherman knows. Yes, sir, Mike, that harness is going to come in handy. Broadbill fight deep. And you should be in the harness if this one goes berserk. It's a strike. He's hooked. Just look at that line tear off the reel. And Mr. Broadbill is going to realize his lunch has a string attached to it. As if sparring for an opening in the first round, Mike is testing his strength against Mr. Broadbill. Look at the tug on that rod. It's only bamboo, and the Broadbill on the other end must weigh at least 500 pounds. You can bet this kind of fishing requires top physical condition. Matching his powerful body against the pull of the fish, Mike Lerner proves again he's one of the world's greatest anglers. If everything holds, Mr. Broadbill is done for. But there's a long, hard battle ahead. And it's not unusual for an angler to struggle first with these denizens of the deep, only to find when the heartbreaking battle is over that all his strength and skill were not enough to match the cunning and dynamite power of the fighting broadbill. Hooking onto one of these monsters must be something like trying to stop an express train with rod and reel, because these mighty fish do plunge through the water at near express train speed. So hang on, Mike Lerner. It's a fight to the finish. And there's a great shot of a swordfish underwater. Believe us, that fish looks just about all in. So, a few more tugs, Mike. 
Eve Harding, lad. Now he's on top. But say, he's still got a lot of fight left. And this is a ticklish time. More fish are lost close to the boat than anywhere else in the angling game. Yes, Mr. Broadbill has sounded again. It's a long, tough grind, this fighting a fish that's gone straight down. And angler and crew must be on their toes every minute. A single false move, and the work of ours can be undone in an instant. But this is the one to get away. Yes, old man Broadbill put up a whale of a scrap, but he made the mistake of tangling with a veteran angler and a veteran crew. And it's another big V for victory in the learner angling lock. Now comes the job of hoisting the giant aboard. But once he's secure on the block and tackle, up he comes. And if you ask us, an inglorious end for a game fighter. Of course, it takes a little elbow grease. The broad bill is swung aboard, a valued trophy. You can imagine the feeling of satisfaction and relief that comes to an angler when his deep sea adversary finally admits defeat. It must be something like knocking out the heavyweight champion of the world. For indeed, these are the champions of the sea. Their strength and their courage are not to be matched among any other monsters of the deep. You can judge the size of Mr. Broadbill as compared with the men in the boat. There'll be congratulations due and a lot of cheering all around when they get this baby. On the dock, the huge crane is a mighty handy gadget. Swings that fish just as easy as you'd handle a minnow. And another chapter on big game angling is ended. In addition to being a sportsman, Mike Lerner is associated with the American Museum of Natural History in New York. And wherever his expeditions take him, one or more scientists from the museum along. Thus it is that while the learners and the expedition members are having great sport, they are at the same time adding immeasurably to scientific research and study of these ocean habitants. Little is known of the origin, habits, and life of the broadbill swordfish. So as the great fish is carefully weighed, measured, and dissected, all of this data is kept in field notebooks for future reference. Then, with the aid of expedition members, a mold of plaster of Paris is prepared and carefully applied. This is a delicate work. Once the cast is finished, it's sawed into sections, lifted with great care, and placed in specially constructed containers, which are later shipped back to the American Museum of Natural History in the United States. All of these operations are watched with keen interest by a crowd of natives who, we learned, were only hoping for a handout of swordfish steaks. Marlin tailing to port. Get ready. A flip of his tail, a surge, and a splash. And he's hooked. This Conservation Minute is brought to you by the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Let's talk about boating safety. It's really great to get out on the water, but did you know that hundreds of people are killed every year in boating accidents? Most of them drown during an accident that happens while fishing or returning from a fishing trip. But there's really an easy way to make sure that doesn't happen to you. Wear a life jacket. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission has kicked off a new boating safety awareness campaign called Wear It Florida. I know what you're thinking. How am I going to be able to fish with a big, bulky life jacket on? Well, that problem's been solved. This inflatable belt pack is comfortable, lightweight, easy to wear, and easy to forget that you even have it on until you're in the water and need it. These life-saving belts will help you concentrate on catching fish and make sure you'll be able to come back and do it again tomorrow. Log on to myfwc.com website and click on Wear It Florida to learn more and spread the word to your boating friends. I'm Captain Rick Murphy and with Florida Keys, I stay at the La Jolla Resort in Isla Mirada, a place for families and fishermen. The La Jolla is located on the bay at mile marker 82.2 and has easy access to the Everglades, the flats of Isla Mirada and the offshore reefs are just minutes away. The La Jolla Resort has great dockage, boat ramps, barbecue pits and swimming pools. So whether your group is small or large, the La Jolla can take care of all your needs. Why is Yamaha your best investment? Charter boat captain and tournament angler George Mitchell. No matter where I fish, I know I've got the strongest, most reliable outboard there is. For 25 years, Yamaha's innovative technology has produced the best outboards in the water. Tournament after tournament, win after win. The Yamaha F350. Power, reliability, and fuel efficiency. Yamaha. Because your best investment starts right here. 
Jackson. Over the past 30 years, I've fished some really poor places and caught some really hardcore fish. <laughs> the only thing that separated me from those fish was my fishing line, and that's why I choose Suffolk. Suffolk really is a brazen resistant and is a hardcore fishing line. So take it from a hardcore fisherman, with Suffolk, there's nothing you can't catch. Look at this line here! Riptide SF from Minn Kota. Its ruthless new mount features an anodized aluminum mono arm with uncompromising strength. A countertension stabilizer with no play and no give for whisper quiet operation. And lift assist for effortless stow and deploy. But it doesn't just sound tough, it's battle tested to help you tear through everything from heavy chop to corrosive salt water. Riptide SF, the assault on salt has begun. At Contender, we've specialized in building high-performance, top-quality, custom-made boats for more than five years. Contender has redefined what a fishing boat can be, and we are committed to producing the finest fishing boats in the world. And there has never been a better time to get a great deal on our entire line of Contender boats. Be sure to check out our new generation T models, the 27, 31, and 33, all available with optional forward seating. We're looking forward to welcoming you into the Contender family of boats. The Lunar Party worked almost until dawn, but with the first rays of the sun and a quick cup of coffee, they were off again in quest of more monsters of the deep. And once more, a tempting morsel of bait is trolled as strip as all hands scan the surface for telltale fins. Marlin tailing to port. Get ready. A flip of his tail, a surge, and a splash. And he's hooked. It's Helen's turn, and like her husband, she's no novice when it comes to bending a rod. Lucky for her that she isn't, for this Marlin's a huge one, and he's fighting mad as he makes leap after leap the hook. Greyhounding, as it's called, is spectacular stuff when a Pacific Marlin's taking you over the jumps. But Helen's wise to all the tricks, and she lets the fish jump his head off. Look at that baby go. There's dynamite on the other end of that line. And again, it seems incredible that any living thing could sustain such a pace. That line is dwindling from the reel, yard after yard. And in ability and long experience, it begins to look as though Helen will have to do something and do it quick. Otherwise, those mad leaps the fish is making will take all the linen from the spool. Hold him, Helen, hold him. With too much slack in the line, the fish is apt to cut the linen with his tail or bill. He's certainly going places, this Marlin. A moment ago, he was close by. And now look at him. But Helen Lerner matches his skill. There he turns again, and he's heading out to sea, straight foot. What a jump. That's one of the greatest action shots we've ever seen. And he nearly bent Helen's rod double. What a Marlin. What a fight. What a woman. You'd think he'd tire, but you don't know these Pacific Marlins. Or do you? You do? Well, duck your heads then, because he's coming right into the boat. No wonder millions of people like to go fishing. If that's a simp, we'll have some ourselves. Well, it looks like that was the payoff. A do-or-die jump for freedom. He didn't quite make it. And Helen's got him where she wants him now. Head out of water and fresh it. When they look like that, they're in the bag, unless the hook pulls up. Fortunately, nothing like that happens. Slowly but surely, the beaten gamester fights feebly to the last. Just the last few minutes of holding the line taut while the bit gives up the battle. The gaff sinks home, and another great ocean warrior has met more than his match in wood and twine and feminine skill and courage. Congratulations, Helen. The skipper tells her that she's voted a new world's record for women. Shake.
While Helen fought her fish, Mike found luck on another boat. And with flags of victory flying from the outriggers, the seagoing safari heads for port. Once ashore, there's another picture to take. It wouldn't be a fishing trip unless the angler had something to show back home. Both Helen and Mike have plenty to be happy about. No wonder they're smiling, as for us. But how about a vote of thanks to Mike and Helen Lerner? They are indeed an outstanding couple in American sport, and they sure produced some real monsters of the deep. Well, I hope that you really enjoyed watching these classic films. And did you know that IGFA has over 2,000 of these films for you, the public, to view? So there's a great reason to go visit the IGFA Museum and create your own sportsman's adventure. Check out the Sportsman's Adventures website at www.sportsmansadventures.com. Coming up next week on Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. Oh, look at the yellow one. The yellow one's chasing the line. See that? Look, he's trying to get the meat that's dragging on the leader. Sportsman's Adventures was brought to you by Contender Boats, Costa Del Mar, see what's out there, Trigger X, Suffix Lines, Loop Reels, Ameritrail, custom trailer manufacturers, and by Screen Print Plus, when image matters.